Section 7.2.39-T. The number of chocolate chips in an 18-ounce bag of chocolate chip cookies is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 1260 and a standard deviation of 129 chips. What is the probability that a randomly selected bag contains between 1,000 and 1,400 chocolate chips? Okay, so we did this problem already uh, at the beginning of the section. And so we end up converting them to z-scores to get this, this area. Okay, now in this question, they're not asking us to convert this to, to, um, to z-scores. So our area is going to be different, but I wanted to make notes so you understand that in this question, using technology, they only want you to use these numbers. So I'm going to put over here the TI-84, okay, and that's what we're going to use. We're going to use the formula for that. So here is our formula, okay. So again, we're not converting to z-scores, so we're not going to get the same area. We're just going to use this part here. We want to be able to find the probability that it's going to be in between 1,000 and 1,400. So that means we want to find normal CDF. Our lower bound is going to be 1,000. Our upper bound is going to be 1,400. We know that our mean from the problem is going to be 1,260. And we know that our standard deviation is 129. Okay, so what is that going to equal? Well, we're going to go ahead and plug that into our calculator. Okay, so we have second distribution. We're going to go to normal CDF. We're going to plug in 1,000 as the lower bound because we want to find the area in between. And then the upper bound is 1,400 with a standard deviation of 1,260. I'm sorry, a mean of 1260 and a standard deviation of 129. And then let's hit enter. Okay, so let's see the area that we get for that. Okay, so for this example, if we run it to four decimal places, we get 0 0.8392. Okay, you can see it's quite different than what we get over here. Because again, we're just using the numbers that were given in the problem. We not, we're not converting them to z-scores. So we're not doing the part on the left. We're just trying to find our answer quickly using technology. Okay, now let's see what happens when we use StatCrunch. Okay, so what you want to do is we want to be able to find the area that's in between those values. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that the, we're going to go, we're going to select between okay and we know that the mean is 1260 we know that the standard deviation is 129 and we know it's got to be in between 1000 and 1400 and now we're going to select compute so again by using stack crunch then we can see that we're going to get the same result. So therefore, in this example, we get the same area to be 0 0.8392. Okay, so again, that's using technology. And again, we're just using the numbers 1,400 as opposed to what we've done on the left from a previous exercise. Okay, let's do the same thing in this next one. All right, again, we're going to use the TI-84 calculator. Okay, so we're not going to convert them to z-scores. So what we want to do is we want to find what is the probability that x is less than 1,050. Okay, so let's go ahead and then use our normal CDF. Okay, so for this example, we know that it's going to be the normal CDF. And so we want to find out everything that's lower than 1050. So that means the, the lower bound is going to be negative 9999. The upper bound is going to be 1050. We know that our mean, again, from the beginning is 1260. 
and we know that our standard deviation is 29. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. So we got second distribution. We're going to go down to normal CDF. We know our lower bound is negative 9999. We know that our upper bound is 1050. We know that our mean is 1260. And the standard deviation is 129. Okay, let's go ahead and press enter there. So let's go ahead and copy that. Okay, so if we round that to four decimal places, then we get 0 0.0518. Okay, again, slightly different than when we use the z-scores. So we got to be careful on, again, how we're going about what we're using for our particular um, when it comes to technology. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the graph. Okay, so we're going to use our normal curve here. We know that the mean, again, is 1260. We know the standard deviation is 29. Okay, we know that it's not going to be in between this time. We're, make, we're looking for the standard here. Okay, so we want to make sure that it's going to be less than or equal to 1050. And then we're going to select Compute. And then if you notice there, again, it's 0 0.0518 if we round it to four decimal places. So let me go ahead and put that graph in here. And we can see there that it's going to be associated with that number. So let's see if I can make that smaller so I can fit that in there. Okay. So now you can see that the area, again, and that's for stack crunch. gives us the same result, 0 .01, uh, 0.0518 as we got using the calculator, okay? All right, let's take a look at part C. So looking at part C, again, we're gonna use our TI-84, okay? And the question is asking us, what proportion of the bags contain more than 1,200 chocolate chips? So P of X, which is greater than 1,200. So again, we want to find normal CDF. Okay, now the lower bound here is going to be 1,200 because that's the lower bound number. The upper bound number is going to be positive 9999 with a mean of 1,260 and a standard deviation of 129. So let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. So second distribution, normal CDF. We're gonna put in 1200 as our lower bound because we're finding the area to the right. The upper bound is positive 9999, comma, with a mean of 1260 and a standard deviation of 129. And then let's go ahead and copy that. So therefore, if we round this to four decimal places, we get 0 0.6791. Okay. And now let's go ahead and use stack crunch. So if we're going to use stack crunch, Okay, so we're going to have now, we know that it's going to be standard, and we know the mean is 1260, we know the standard deviation is 129. We now know it's going to be greater than, so we need to change the inequality to greater than, and then we need to put in the number that's given, which is 1200, and then we're going to select compute. And then when we select compute, you will see what our graph in our area looks like which is going to be very similar to what we just did earlier. So again, using stack crunch gives us, again, rounding it to four decimal places, gives us 0 0.6791. Okay, and let's take a look at the last one. Okay, so again, if you notice here how they're different when you're using the z-scores. Okay, so pay close attention to that. Okay, so... Next we want to find is what is the percentile rank 
of a bag that contains 1,425 chocolate chips. So we want to find P of X, which is less than 1,425. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to use the formula for the calculator, which is normal CDF. So again, we're using TI-84 here. So that's normal CDF. Now the lower bound is less than is going to be negative 9999. We know the upper bound is 1425. We know the mean is 1269. Sorry, not 1269, 1260. And we know the standard deviation is 129. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. So we have second distribution, normal CDF, negative 9999, comma 1425, comma 1260, comma 129. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that there. So here we get an area which is equal to 0 0.8996, but we need to convert it to a percentage by multiplying it by 100%, which gives us 89.96%, and then rounding it to the nearest percent tells us that it's 90%. So that means the bag contains... 1,425 chocolate chips is in the 90th percentile. So this is the 90th percentile. Okay, now let's use StatCrunch. Okay, so again, using StatCrunch, okay, we already know what our mean and our standard deviation is. We know that what we're looking for is when X is less than 1425, so we need to con change that inequality to less than, and then we got to put in 1425, and therefore now you're going to get that result. So here, again using StatCrunch and putting in that information, we're going to get the same result as we got in our calculator. So you can see here this is going to give us the same value here, which gives us the answer of the 90th percentile. So again, at least this last answer gave us it pretty, this is 89.96, this is 89.97. So in this case, this gave us the 90th percentile. But again, just to go back up here, keep in mind that when you're just using the regular numbers here, okay, you're gonna get a different, slightly different area. It's close, but it's slightly different when you're rounding it to four decim decimal places.